I'm Oscar. And I'm Dan. And today we are in Malta Country 85. <laughs> We're Oscar and Dan, two boys from Sweden traveling the world together full time. We're currently trying to visit 100 countries before the end of the year. And in this video, we're sharing our first impressions of our 85th country, the small island nation in the middle of the Mediterranean, Malta. Good morning. <sighs> first day in Valletta, Malta. It's been a long time, honestly, since I was this excited to explore a new place because Malta is just a lovely place from what we hear. It's one of the most LGBT friendly countries in the world. It's beautiful. It's great for digital nomads. On paper, this is like the perfect place for us. Yes. So I'm just very excited. We're so excited to explore. Slema is where we're staying, right? And then we're gonna go to Valletta, which is a historic town. We're very excited for our uh, four days here in Malta. We're renting a car. I'm gonna drive around the island and to the other island of Gozo. And we're also going scuba diving, hopefully, one day. <laughs> And what is literally the first restaurant we see as we step out of our hotel today? Taste of Sweden. Feeling right at home already. <laughs> this little beach is just like in this tiny bay in the middle of the city. And even here, the water is like crystal clear, super blue and turquoise. Amazing. One thing that you realize when you travel that's so funny about Europeans is that if there is anywhere you can swim, they will do it. Like if there's water and you can physically get in somehow, Europeans will be all over that. In most countries, like literally in much of Asia, people can live by the most beautiful, pristine, clear water beach and it's like deserted because yeah. no one wants to swim. It's true. I feel like we need to clarify though that we are both Europeans because I think a lot of first time viewers yeah. might assume that we're not. We're both Swedish. Just yeah. <laughs> I mean, we know that everyone in Sweden swims. If there's like the most polluted lake with oil spills and everything, yeah. Swedish people will be like, oh my god, yes, tanning. So. so true. <laughs> the first time I became aware of Malta's existence is actually a pretty funny story because I used to be obsessed. I mean, I still love it, but I used to be absolutely obsessed with Eurovision and I would watch it religiously every year and I would also watch the Junior Eurovision Song Contest when I was younger. And the first one I ever watched was in 2003, I think. And I fell in love with the Maltese uh, entry to the Junior Eurovision Song Contest. And I voted several times for this song. And I, to this day, I can still sing the chorus. Like a song. I didn't know English at the time, so I was just like making up words. <laughs> scuba place but it can't be siesta already we're gonna try to book our dives today already and then hopefully do it on day three some of you might remember that we just recently took our scuba certifications in thailand so this will be our first dive since taking the certifications we need to do it now i feel so we don't forget everything that we just learned we need to keep the knowledge fresh <laughs> It just feels so fun walking around here because it's such a mix of different places for us. And being such a small island, you can see the ocean from almost everywhere. You feel so free, especially after having been in the desert for uh, nine to 10 days like Oscar and I just have. This place just feels so wonderfully Mediterranean. It really feels like a melting pot of every single country and culture and language as well that surrounds uh, the entire Mediterranean Sea. Like it feels like a mix of Lebanon and you have Italy, you have the French Riviera and then North Africa just all coming together here in Malta. It's so cool. We love seeing so many vegan friendly places. Already we're just walking along the water here and we've seen so many already. We've walked across all of Slema. We need to learn how to pronounce it. And now we are going to take the boat to Valletta, which seems like a wonderful way to travel across. I just realized I hope they take card because we haven't withdrawn cash yet. Oops. Hello. 
Hey, do you accept card for the ferry? Yeah, well, sure. All right, <laughs> so just withdrew cash. Now we're running so we can catch the ferry, which leaves in about one minute. One way or it is? One way for now. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Made it. Ah, we made it to Valletta. It was a beautiful quick boat ride over here for one euro fifty per person. Also, the limestone buildings here in Valletta. I mean, we haven't even walked through the actual town yet, but look how beautiful they are. And I love these like colorful, um, what do you call them? I forget the word, but you know, these things that stick out from the wall. So, so pretty. They also seem to be building a hell of a lot in the city. Like there are so many cranes that you can see down in the distance. So it really seems like it's a city of construction where a lot is happening, a lot of new developments are going on. This is a pasticeria, which is one of the signature things to eat in Malta. But I mainly focus on the name. Unkai. I forget what show that is, but it's one of my favorite animated. Unkai. Okay, Unkai. Okay, Mr. Mackey. Unkai. 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 One super random thing that we've been noticing here so far is that pretty much all the cars on the side of the streets are covered in dust. I don't know if it's from the buildings or what it could be, but it's literally like every other car looks like it really needs a bath. <laughs> Just for Instagram now. Yeah, there's no uh oh, I'm gonna take a shot coming out of here. <laughs> More vegan stuff advertised. Hooray. Wow, it's honestly, wow, it's honestly, wow, it's honestly, wow, it's honestly been a long time since we were in a place that was this touristy. There are so many tourists everywhere. And I think the thing is also, Valletta is very small, so everyone is just concentrated in this very small area. It gives the impression that there's a lot more tourists than there actually are here. That being said, it is so beautiful. We've been wandering around for a while and eventually we've made it down to the cruise ship port of Valletta. We've never been on a cruise, I think it's time to change that soon so we can add that experience to our list of things. But we're always so like blown away by how big the ships are, especially when next to a tiny city like this. It's like they're bigger than all the buildings combined. This is the former Prime Minister. I wish you could smell these flowers. Okay, I think we really lucked out because in 10 minutes they're doing the saluting battery, so they might be shooting something. I don't know. We'll see what, what happens here with the show. The rich military history of the Maltese Highlands. That was a lot louder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs>
So we just walked down now to sort of the main cathedral in Valletta, which is St. Paul's Cathedral. I think it's more of a sight that you see from a distance because right here, all the streets are so narrow, so you get very close to it and you can't really like admire the beauty of it from down by the street. And also, <laughs> funnily enough, this is the sign that's on the door. Due to the pandemic and other circumstances, <laughs> these are now the opening hours. I love that, other circumstances. I wonder what happened. I feel like I just need to take a minute to talk about the pest that is plaguing Europe, and that is the Euronet ATMs. They are literally everywhere around the continent, and they are such a scam. It makes me angry because they scam tourists by charging these exorbitant fees for withdrawals when you can just as easily go to a big branch ATM and get it without the fee. But somehow they've managed to like spread all around Europe like the plague, and it's just disgusting. So avoid Euronet ATMs. We are heading to the most amazing place in Malta, Marks and Spencers in Maletta. <laughs> I'm kidding, it's not the most amazing place, but I was born and grew up in the UK, so I love a good Marks and Spencer. So this is our new thing, oh apparently. My god, you guys. So since we were in Brazil, obviously our obsession there was acai. We've been discovering that there's this chain, our favorite chain in Brazil, Oakberry, exists in a few random places around the world, like Dubai. We ate there all the time. And now I was looking for snack places, and I was like, wait, Oakberry in Malta, of all places? And I think there is one, so let me just confirm. There seems to be three locations. Oh my god, we're going. Hallelujah. True Maltese food. <laughs> After walking around Valletta for about four hours, we feel all building out, as we would say. We can only take so much in one day, because as you know, it's exhausting walking around in the heat and so many tourists and everything. So we've really enjoyed it, but it is time to go back to the slightly calmer part of, uh, well, I guess it's not Valletta, Sli Sli Sliema, and try to find Oakberry, and then wander around a bit out there, where it seems like maybe more people live nowadays. Best of Brazil in a cup. <laughs> Wow, so now walking through the more local parts of the city. I mean, it's not just one city. They're kind of smaller entities that form one sort of big continuous city. But here in Sliema, there's really like no tourists whatsoever. There's only like the occasional person you walk past. And they're pretty much always locals, I think. It's a very, very different vibe. And we were saying, apart from sort of the craziness of Valletta, this must be a very calm place to live. So yeah, it's growing on us. Next time on Oscar and Dan. Gossitems, gossip, gossip, gossitems. Partly Dubai, partly the US. Dan Max in the house. Two layers of wetsuits. I feel like I'm about to do a moon landing.